Good afternoon. We're here from Partick, Free Church of Scotland, continuing. And it's a pleasure to be in the street to bring something of the good news of the gospel to you passing by. I think it's clear that most people don't go to the house of God these days. And therefore, it is incumbent upon the church to get out and go where the people are and to be able to bring the good news of the gospel. And indeed, the gospel is good news. It is news that has come from heaven. And the gospel is concerning a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel tells us what God has done in Christ to deal with our terrible situation that we find ourselves in. You see, the Bible makes it very clear to us all that there is none righteous, no, not one. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible teaches us. The Bible does not flatter us. It tells us the truth plainly and clearly. And yes, we might not like to hear these things, but nevertheless, we must hear them because it's God's verdict upon ourselves, upon each and every one of us. Let me read to you one or two verses from the Scripture, from the infallible Word of God, from God's final revelation to mankind. There is none righteous, no, not one, it says. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. What we have just read there is God's description of mankind. It is God's description of us all. It is God's description of everyone passing by here this afternoon. For the Bible tells us, for there is no difference for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible goes on to tell us in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And therefore that's why it is vitally important that all of us hear about the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of us hear about this glorious person who has come from heaven, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the self, himself the form of a servant and found in the likeness of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's how the Bible describes what Jesus Christ has done. And friends, it's vitally important that you understand about this person, that you hear about this person, and that you put your faith and hope and trust upon this person, because it's only this person who can save you. It's only this person who can bring you to heaven. The Lord Jesus did say himself in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says it, Look it up in your own Bibles. He says, what does he say? In John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. No one will ever be found in heaven but by the work of the Lord Jesus. No one will ever be found in heaven but whom Christ has taken to heaven. No other religion can save, no minister of the gospel, no elder, no priest, no cardinal, no pope, 
no Muhammad, no other person, no other religion, only the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, friends, that's why we're here this afternoon. We want to remind you about this person, and we want to tell you about this person, that you too might put your faith and hope and trust upon him. Why is it so vital that we have Christ as Lord and Savior? Why is it that we must have him, that he must be our Savior? Friends, the Bible tells us the day is coming. The day is coming when we will all stand before the judgment seat of God or the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone will give account of himself, of the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or bad, according to that he hath done. You will have a day, you will have an audience with the Lord Jesus Christ. This one whom we proclaim to you as Savior and Lord will one day have you before his judgment seat. And his verdict upon your life will determine where you will spend eternity. And that's why Paul said, when he reminded us all of that great day of judgment, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, knowing the terror of the Lord, that's why we're here today. We know something of the terror of the Lord. We know it's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We know this, and that's why we want to proclaim to you a Savior, because friends, if you're in Christ, if you have Christ as your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, read it in your Bibles for yourself. Paul says there, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is what we proclaim to you today, that in Christ there is no condemnation. This is the glorious news of the Gospel. This is what Jesus Christ has come to do. This is what He has achieved by His life, and by His death, and by His resurrection. And therefore, friends, as you pass by, you must indeed consider this glorious person you must consider Christ because He is the only begotten Son of God. And therefore, being the Son of God, He is divine. He is just like God. Those that have seen me have seen the Father, He says to Philip. Don't listen to anyone that will tell you that Christ is not God in the flesh. Don't listen to those so-called Christians who will say that the Lord Jesus Christ is a man who has become God. We must be clear upon this matter that the Lord Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who has become a man and he has become a man in order that he might suffer, in order that he might die. This was his great purpose in life. He said, I have not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And that's what he did by going to the cross. How could he possibly save us by dying in the, on the cross? He could save friends because he was being punished. He was taking upon himself the punishment that was rightly due unto his people. God the Father had worked out a wonderful way of salvation. A wonderful way whereby sinners might be saved, yet sin was punished, and sin was punished in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know His work was acceptable. How do we know His work was acceptable? We know His work was acceptable, friends, because He died. And when He died, He was taken off from the cross, and He was put in a tomb. And there he suffered, and there he remained in the tomb until the third day, until the first day of the week, until Sunday, and then he rose victorious over the grave, so that death no longer has any hold over Jesus Christ. And that proved that his work was accepted 
by God the Father. And of course, we know that on the 40 days after the resurrection, he returned to heaven and he was received into heaven in glory. And we know, friends, that he's there at God's right hand today. There Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, there he is at the right hand of God the Father until that day he shall return. Yes, friends, he shall return. This one who suffered on the cross, this one who went into the tomb, this one who returned to heaven will come back one day. And as the book of Revelation tells us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh on the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him, and all the nations of the earth shall wail and mourn because of him. This is a reality, friends. I know you're passing by today, you have other things in your mind. You're going to the shops, you're preparing for tonight, whatever you're doing. You're not thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ, but one day he will be the most important person that you will ever know. You will want to have him as your Lord and Savior that day when he returns. You know, friends, the Bible talks about this great day of judgment. And that day of judgment will come when Christ shall return. And you know we've had a preview of that day of judgment. We've had a preview of it. We've had a preview when God sent a flood upon the ancient world. The flood that was destroyed all mankind except for those who were in Noah's ark. The whole of the earth was covered in water. God indeed saw the wickedness of man. And God saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's what God saw. That's what God saw when he sent the flood. And God saw the wickedness of man in the earth and how that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil evil continually and therefore he sent this flood and only those who were in the ark Noah his wife his three sons and their wives were saved and all the animals and friends that's a preview of what shall happen that day when Jesus shall come in the clouds when the Lord Jesus Christ shall return in great power and glory that will be the day when we shall have the day of judgment. That will be the day when you will be called forth out of your grave. And you will stand before him and you will give account of what you have done. The deeds in the body, whether good or bad. And as Paul says, because he knows about this day of judgment, he goes about telling people, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And that's what we're here today, friends, is to persuade you to come and turn away from your rebellion, to turn away from your sins, and to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, and to embrace that glorious, that wonderful salvation that he has promised to all who will come to him. What does that verse say in the Bible? What does the most famous verse in the Bible say? John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, do you not see? Do you not understand? Do you not grasp the great love of God towards sinners? He sent not an angel. He didn't send an archangel. He sent his only begotten Son. He sent the most precious individual he could possibly send. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ and he became a man in order that he would suffer, in order that he would die, in order that he might work out a salvation. And that's what he's done, friends. And here you are, you're walking by, you're thinking nothing of this person, you're thinking nothing of this wonderful news. And do you not know, friends, that the angels in heaven look upon this with wonder? They are absolutely amazed that the Son of God became the Son of Man in order to save sinners. 
and they are indeed overwhelmed. They cannot grasp. They are stupefied in some sense with the wonderful, glorious love of God towards sinful mankind. And therefore, friends, you are to believe in this person. You are to receive him. You are to call upon him. And he is the one who receives sinners. All the, that the Father giveth to me shall come to me. And whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. And that's why we proclaim the gospel. That's why we offer a full and free and complete salvation. We tell you to turn from your sins, to leave your old life of sin behind, and come and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Did he not say, friends, did he not say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, friends, as you walk by today, have you got a burden? I know you have. I know you've got a burden. I used to have it myself. I used to have it. It was a terrible burden. It used to trouble my conscience. When I go to bed at night, I wonder, what happens if I die during the night? I knew what would happen. I was lost. I was perishing. There was no hope for me. But I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that wonderful burden, that heavy burden that I could not shake off was gone. He took it away. And now, friends, I have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful peace. I have a peaceful conscience. Why have I got this? Because, friends, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And Jesus Christ is my Savior. And, friends, I want you to know this glorious salvation. I want you to know this full, free salvation. I want you to know what it is to be right with God. Therefore, the Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, friends, you cannot get right with God by working your way to heaven. There are some people here in front of me who are trying to work their way to heaven. You cannot work your way to heaven. Only Jesus can take you to heaven. Only him. You cannot work your way to heaven with your good works. You cannot work your way to heaven with church attendance. You cannot work your way to heaven by doing a multitude of things. For all, the Bible says, all our righteous deeds are but filthy rags in the sight of the Lord. The only righteousness we have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all. And that's why you must have him as your Lord and Savior. It's not enough to have religion. It's not enough. Multitudes have religion and they will perish. You must have Christ. He must be in your heart. He must be your Lord. He must be your Savior. Sir, sir, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? That's what matters. That's all I want to tell you. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when you must get right with God. The Bible tells us, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Oh, the young people passing by here today, you're not always going to be young. And the Bible tells us, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Seek the Lord in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You know, you're not always going to be young. One day you'll be old like me. That will happen. And youth will seem a distant past. And maybe you're enjoying life now. But what will happen that day when you pass into eternity? Every one of you, you're all on a journey. You're all on a journey. You're all walking towards eternity. Where will you be? Where will you go? 
The Bible tells us there's two places, two places, heaven or hell. Don't listen to others who'll tell you there's purgatory. Don't listen to others. When we die, friends, it's either heaven or hell. You know this, you can only get to heaven if you have Christ. You can only get to heaven if he's your Lord, if he has saved you, if he has cleansed you of your sins. And if you don't have Christ, friends, there's no hope. You'll go to that place that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. That's why we're here this afternoon, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. We tell you there's another way. We tell you there's a person who will save. How do I know he will save you? If you turn from your sins and if you call upon him, he will receive you. He will turn none away. Look at your Bibles. Look at them. Did Jesus turn any away from him? When they came to Jesus, did he turn them away? No, he did not turn them away. When they came to Jesus, he received them. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, he says. I have come to call sinners to repentance. And therefore, friends, this afternoon we're here from Partick, Free Church of Scotland continuing, and we want to proclaim the gospel to you. Many people will want to proclaim religion to you. Many people will want to proclaim good works to you. Many people will tell you, do this, do this, do this. But the Bible says, believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he is the eternally begotten Son of God. And he is the one who has come. He's taken upon himself our form and our nature in order that he might save sinners. Sinners just like you and I. No wonder we cannot keep this to ourselves. Didn't the Lord Jesus give his disciples that glorious commission before he returned to glory? Go into all the earth. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. We're not proclaiming to you rules. We're not proclaiming to you regulations. We are telling you about Jesus. Jesus Christ the Lord. That glorious person who gave up of himself that once for all perfect sacrifice. The Bible says, read it for yourselves when you get home. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You know, your eternal destiny depends and rests upon your reaction and reception of Jesus Christ. If you will but receive him on the terms of the gospel, if you will but turn from your sins, if you will look upon him, you shall be saved. Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. And you must repent. You must turn from your sins. The angel said to Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. That's what his name means. Jesus means Savior. He has not come to destroy. He has come to save. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Oh, friends, now's the time. Now's the accepted hour. Now's the time to embrace Christ. Now's the time to seek him. We don't know what life is about, do we? We don't know for how long we will be here. 
Life is short, is it not? Life is uncertain. What is your life? It is but a vapor. That's what it says. That's what the Holy Word of God says. And the moment you die, friends, your eternal destiny shall be secure. It will either be heaven or it will be hell. It will be heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Father and with the Holy Spirit and with the saints forever, 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 forever. Or it shall be in hell with the devil and his angels. What about it then today? Where do we stand? I am the bread of life, Jesus says. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. Come then to the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. You can have everlasting life now, friends. The true, genuine Christian is one who possesses eternal life now. He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. What a thought as you pass by today. If you do not have Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that the wrath of God abides on you now. But you see, I don't feel it. That's true. It's very possible that multitudes who have the wrath of God abiding on them now don't feel it. Why do they not feel it? Because they're dead spiritually. Dead. But we must take the word of God because it's true. It is his infallible word. And we cannot rely upon our own feelings or interpretations. He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. Christian, you have everlasting life now. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Friends, there's one person you don't want to dally with. There's one person you don't want to tamper with, and it is the Lord our God. And therefore you are to accept the offer of salvation that is found in Christ and in him Christ alone. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. <clears throat> We're here from Partick. Free Church of Scotland continuing, and we'd love to see you come and worship with us. We meet at Two Thornwood Terrace, that's just off to Barton Road, up from the police station beside Thornwood Primary School. We meet tomorrow, the Lord's Day, Sunday, 11 a.m., and again, 6.30, we'd love to see you. We meet on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. We give you a warm welcome that you would come and hear more of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless his word to us.